New details have recently emerged regarding the Chinese People's Liberation Army, PLA, Air Force contingent deployed to the strategically located southern province of Tibet, including the deployment of new J-16 strike fighters. The J-16 reportedly first entered service in the PLA Air Force in 2013, and is one of the most capable derivatives of the Su-27 flanker air superiority airframe in the world. While best known for its strike capabilities, and its potential as an AWACS and tanker hunter at extreme ranges, the fighter is also highly capable in air-to-air -air combat. The deployment of the J-16 in considerable numbers this provides the PLA Air Force with a formidable complement to the J-11B, an older flanker derivative specialized in air superiority. The deployment of the J-16 can be better understood when considering the capabilities of the Air Force of neighboring India, which borders Tibet where the elite strike fighters have been deployed and has historically disputed Chinese sovereignty over its southern region. The mainstay of the Indian Air Force's fighter fleet is the Su-30 MKI, an advanced 4-plus generation air superiority fighter also derived from the flanker design. India has continued to modernize the Su-30 MKI design with Russian assistance, and the country's fleet continues to grow with well over 300 planned for frontline service. The PLA Air Force has a number of assets capable of matching, and in some cases comfortably surpassing, the capabilities of the Su-30 MKI. The reasons for selecting the J-16 however closely reflect the priorities of the PLA and its intentions towards its southern neighbor. China's Su-30 MKK, while in many ways more capable than the MKI variant, was acquired primarily for a maritime strike role and to secure air superiority at sea. These fighters are largely being reserved for operations in the country's coastal regions, particularly the South China Sea, for which they are ideally suited. China's high-end next-generation air superiority fighters, Su-35 and J-20, have also been reserved primarily for deployment near the South China Sea and Taiwan Strait where the country perceives the greatest threat to its security. There they face the prospects of going head-to-head -head with elite Western fighters, namely the U.S. Air Force's F-22 Raptors. The deployment of cutting-edge platforms such as the J-20 and Su-35 near India's borders, to which Delhi has no similarly capable analog, could be seen as an escalation, something which both parties have a strong interest in avoiding. The J-16 however, fielding similar capabilities though in many ways superior to the latest Su-30 variants, will ensure continued parity against the increasingly capable and fast-growing Su-30 MKI air superiority fleet without its deployment causing significant risk of escalation. The J-16 design continues to be modernized with new munitions, electronic warfare systems, and even stealth coatings making it a highly reliable platform in both strike and air-to-air -air roles to defend China's southern border. If pressed into an air-to-air -air role, the fighter's sensors and high-end munitions, with the PL-15 providing a far more advanced air-to-air -air capability than the R-77 used by India, will ensure that the PLA will retain qualitative parity and the very least, but most likely a considerable advantage. The Taliban said Wednesday its negotiators would next week meet the top US and Pakistani officials including Prime Minister Imran Khan during a key round of talks in Islamabad as part of the ongoing Afghan peace talks. Neither Washington nor Islamabad immediately confirmed the announcement by the Taliban. On the formal invitation of the government of Pakistan, another meeting is scheduled to take place between the negotiation teams of the Islamic Emirate and the US on 18th of February. 2019 in Islamabad, Taliban spokesman Zabi Yulam Mujahid said in a statement. The Taliban's delegation would also meet Prime Minister Khan, the statement said. Mujahid said the regular round of talks was already scheduled to be held on February 25 in Qatar. He said that in the meeting with Khan, Taliban would have comprehensive discussions about Pak-Afghan relations and issues pertaining to Afghan refugees and Afghan businessmen. Though there was no official confirmation, diplomatic sources in Pakistan said that the Taliban delegation would visit Pakistan and hold talks with both American and Pakistani officials. The Taliban and the U.S. are in a discussion to end more than a 17-year-long bloody war in Afghanistan. 
The Taliban control nearly half of Afghanistan, and are more powerful than at any time since the 2001 US-led invasion after the 9-11 terror attacks in 2001. Special U.S. Representative for Afghanistan Reconciliation Zalmi Khalilzad recently said after six days of talks with the Taliban representatives in Doha last month that the U.S. has made significant progress in its peace talks with the Taliban. Since being appointed in September, Khalilzad has met with all sides in an attempt to end America's longest war in which the U.S. has lost over 2,400 soldiers in more than 17 years. U.S. President Donald Trump reportedly wants to cut in half the 14,000 American troops in Afghanistan, and the Taliban leaders have made a U.S. withdrawal a key condition in peace negotiations.